Hello everyone, this is Anne from Odulcina's Crap. I am back today to show you how to create this little uh, cover. Not this. this you will recognize, it's from another video, but I just wanted to show you how I would use this piece that I've just created. And that would be glued on a cover as a deco that you can literally uh, flap. These these two pieces of fabric would be cut shorter. I just left them longer for now, but they would be glued and then I would glue something else there and they would hold on the cover by those two stripes like that. For this video right now, we are just going to do this piece with the eyelets. And later on, I'm going to do a junk journal cover so let's start with that first if you are an instant ink user those boxes are just perfect so I'm gonna tear and you want you don't want to tear straight right so you, you go crazy and you just try to be really messy so at the end, the piece should be perfect. You don't want it to, to be too big too, so you can really remove good parts of it. Ah, this, this looks good. I wonder, now I need to decide which side it will be. I love that actually, so I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to hide this side with a paper. I didn't do it here. I just did that. So my my goal was to... I can leave it there. You can have it as a reference. I've been using my scraps. It's all my papers, but I've been using my scraps. And... I'm looking for little details like that. You see this paper here? There was a little detail. So I'm going to use this part to start with. And I'm going to layer a couple of, uh, of papers, different textures, different style. I don't want the whole thing. I'm actually just interested with that. So let's start with that for this paper. And look at the edge here, this edge like that. How I did that is I've used an old uh, music sheet from a real book that I've caught because it was too large. And I'm going to reuse this part. So maybe this one is longer. Okay, I'm going to reuse this one. So it's just keeping those damaged edge edges. And when I'm going to place my paper, let's say I'm using, maybe I can use this. Yeah, let me just trim that. I'm going to use this. This is part of a kit that I, got, that I have. I'm going to put in the description below all the kit, the papers that I've been using. So, for example, uh, this paper here, in which kit it is, this one, the dress, this one. You know, just in case you're new, sometimes... It happened to me so often when I started doing junk journal that I was seeing a project and I wanted that specific design. And I was always happy when the, the link was there in the description of the video so I could go shop and buy it. Okay, so see, I would just place my paper like that and it creates that edge 
So for this one, I'm not keeping the whole length, but that could be something like that. So of course I'm gonna tear here as well. And just make it look great. I can leave, leave it like that too. And I'll just make sure that my length is okay. So something, something like that. Even the music sheet here, it, it, it looks great. I just, I just wanted to remove the, the end like that. We don't want a straight line here. So we want to remove that. So it kind of fades out under the paper. So something like that. Now I can place this one. Do I want it over? I think I want it over. I'm not a big fan of pointy ends, corners. So maybe something like this. We won't see that much too because look at that. At the end we have some cheesecloth and the dress. So you don't worry too much with how it looks here. Now, maybe I have, I want to add something here. So maybe I can use one of those. I'm just playing and at some point I'll just have the perfect layers. Lots of choices available. Even if I look here, I love the writing. So I think I'll just gonna use that. This is meant to be used like, like I'm doing right now. You tear it or you trim it and it's, it's kind of a small deco. And don't forget, we're gonna put the dress. I've already cut my dress, if I can find it back. Okay, I've already cut my dress. I've inked it a little bit on the sides. And here I've cut the white part there with an exacto so the dress will come like that and with the cheesecloth and everything i think it, i can start with gluing that and we might be pretty okay so i'm gonna start gluing and inking because when we are for this one, I actually didn't ink anything. It was more in the whitish colors, but for this piece here, I just feel it, it should really be inked. Otherwise you have the beige paper and then you see the white. It's like here, you see the white and I prefer a little vintage style, so. I'm just gonna use ink. But sometimes I do projects where I do not ink at all. Okay, here that was already coffee stained, but maybe I can add a little bit more. This too, look at the edge. It's all beige and we see the white. So to my own opinion, we need to ink those kind of pieces and I'll just make it a little bit more grungy. Okay, this I won't. Okay. So now let's start gluing. I'm gonna start with gluing this piece to the music sheet. So 
something like that. Okay. And I realize sometimes I have questions or comments and um, asking me how I can have papers that do not wave when they, uh, they dry. And I thought about it and I really think that the trick is not to use too much glue. If I put more glue, sometimes I'm too generous with my glue and it does wave. So really, if you have a problem with your papers that are always wavy, maybe you just put too much glue. And maybe this little um, art glitter bottle with, because you can buy this piece, it's an extra, and it allows you to be able to to just put a tiny amount of glue and I really do recommend it. Really, really. Okay. Something like this. Now this piece, so you can see how I'm gluing my stuff. I go in layers. Like I'm placing my paper and then I just lift a part of it, apply the glue, and then keep going on like that. And I have this piece here. That's my trick, because otherwise we place the paper and when we remove it to glue it, we don't put it back to the good place. So it's useless. Okay, now I can <laughs> glue it to the cardboard, but I, I've already glued the piece, so I'll just lift, lift it and add the glue here. Don't need to put too much glue. All right, look at that. I like it already. Okay, so the dress will come here. So I need a cheesecloth. And I should have portions of cheesecloth. And to have your cheesecloth uh, crinkled like that, you just add water. You create a ball and you leave it dry in a ball shape. And then every piece of it is interesting because it's all crinkled. This looks great. Look at that. I don't have to work that much. And it's already shabby chic style and just gorgeous as this. But I'm going to add more dimension. So I have some... The other kind of cheesecloth that you get at the dollar store that looks like that. This one is from Amazon, grade 90. I'm going to put the link in the description below. And this is from dollar store, the, the typical cheesecloth that we hear about. But when you combine both, it's really interesting too. Like what about I'm... I'm adding it on top of it. It creates more designs or... I don't know. I love it. And I can stop there. I think I don't need to put that much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue it. And this would be tricky to glue with the art glitter glue. But of course you can. Uh, my my best is really the odd glue for that. So I take my gun and I'm going to start with the bottom here. Place 
my cheesecloth as I want. And then I'm going to use my spatula to really flatten it. And because it's all cheesecloth, the glue goes through and gets the dress. But now I can add more to the corners here and I can put some under the cheesecloth and under the dress and just flatten and this will hold well. I'm going to do the same here under the cheesecloth and under the dress. Just a tiny bit, not too much. There we go. I'm going to do the same for the top. And this here. Okay. And now what I can do is maybe place the fabric that I want to move a little bit. So I can add a little bit more glue, let's say here, just a tiny piece. And with my spatula, I can create or manipulate my cheesecloth as I want. But I like it that way. So I think that's it for, for this. I think that's it. We don't need more than that. Now we want to do the hooks. So let me show you what I have. In my stock, I had like, this was a fabric. I have no idea what it was used for, but it's really, really like a heavy cotton. So I'm using that. This is just perfect. So I'm gonna do two stripes. I prefer to have them longer for now because I don't know where I'm going with that after that. So I'm going to trim them shorter later. So I can tear a little bit the edges like that. And then you want to add maybe two more layers. So I can have... Like I have this old lace that is not that interesting by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear two pieces. And when you want to cut not straight, the trick is you place your scissors like that and you put a uh, pressure on both sides of the fabric while you cut and it creates that edge like that. So when you want to cut, you fold and you put some, some stress on the paper while you cut so it doesn't go too straight. So I'm going to do two pieces like that and maybe something more white. So I had this piece of I don't know what my mom gave me that and I wasn't sure if I would use it one day but today's the day so I'm gonna just make it look really shabby chic like that and maybe I can just do You want to change the angles. You, you really want to play with at least three pieces of fabric or lace to layer them and have something really interesting at the end. But your, your line here will need to be straight, of course.
what about something like that and now i'm gonna use an eyelet to create the hook so maybe here i want to keep as much as possible of this little design so i'm gonna aim for here um you could add a little bit of glue just to make sure it doesn't move but i'm too lazy so i'm going straight forward so i'm gonna hold it like that take my crocodile yeah it gives me a challenge here okay take my crocodile and Make sure my line is straight, especially when I'm gonna put the eyelet, actually. Okay, place the eyelet. And then for the crocodile, you put the little, little hook like that from the top. And you press. Before I press, I'm just gonna make sure that my stripe here is straight because then it won't be able to move anymore. And this is the hook. And now I'm gonna do about the same here at the top. When you when you want it to look more vintage and damage, you just tear everywhere. And that helps a little bit. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna place it here. Might as well, because I already have the cheesecloth. This looks good. Okay, make sure that my stripe is aligned and I press. So this little piece of fabric of lace didn't like it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna glue it, that's it. I'm gonna glue it on top of the others and nobody will know. That's the beauty. Here we go. So we have kind of a cover, part of the cover that will be able to flip like that. All right, so see you in the next video for for a junk journal cover using this little deco here that we just did. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Bye-bye.